So in this video, I'm going to be going over my tips and techniques for scanning using an Epson V600. Firstly, before you plug it in or start scanning anything, you're going to want to make sure you properly wipe down both pieces of glass on the flatbed using a microfiber cloth to make sure you don't scratch any of the glass. The more time you spend on this part, the less time you're going to have to spend in Lightroom or Photoshop spotting out each piece of dust. And trust me, if you don't do this bit right, you'll spend hours in Lightroom getting rid of all the dust. Even if it doesn't look like there's any dust on your flatbed, there is, and you need to spend time getting rid of it all because you'll be annoyed later when it shows up in your scans and you spend hours getting rid of it on Photoshop. So I'd spend a good five minutes, even 10 minutes properly getting rid of every smudge, every bit of dust. It's only gonna save you hours on Lightroom, so I'd get it over with. This scanner comes with brackets for 120, 35 mil and slides. I used to scan 35 mil using this scanner, but I just don't like, I just don't like the way it looks. The colors are sort of off. The colors always looked a bit dead. There's aberrations around the edge of the frame. It's always too soft for my liking. And plus it is so tedious scanning 35 mil on a flatbed because you have to get the strip of six frames put it into the bracket, place it down, make sure it's right, and then do that for every six frames out of your 36 frames, and it just takes way too long. I just pay for the lab to scan my 35 mil. I used to use the 120 bracket a lot, but for some reason with my scanner, I don't know if it's my scanner that's off, sort of the focus is off or something, but I get sharper scans if I just place the film straight down onto the flatbed. And what I do before, whilst the film is still in the sleeve, I'll flatten it down using something flat like a big book, and then something really heavy on top and make sure it's dead flat before I put it onto the flatbed. This technique allows you to scan the full border if that's your thing. Today I'm going to be using Epson Scan just because that's my preferred software. It's consistent for me. I feel like I know the software well enough that I can get consistent results with it. There is other software available. I think there are softwares that have built-in presets for which film you're scanning, but it's all sort of personal preference at the end of the day. So then plug it into your computer and open up Epson Scan. The reason Epson Scan 2 was made was because the latest macOS didn't support 32-bit software so they had to make a 64-bit version for it to work on the latest Macs. That's the only reason this software exists, it's not because it's better or anything. So when you're on here you want to click on Transparency Unit and then select what type of film you're scanning. Today I'm scanning some colour negative. I always just leave it on 24 bit colour just because these scans are just for online use but if you're doing a big print or something you'll probably want to go with 48 bit resolution unless I'm doing a big print or something I always just default to 1200 and always stick your scanning quality on high. Image format, JPEG, blah 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 and then you want to click preview. So after your preview scan has been made your preview will pop up on this section here. So then you want to take this tool and just drag over the negative. And if it gets the colours right, if it guesses them right, um, and you're happy with it, then go into Advanced Settings, Histogram, and this is the important bit. So stick Output on 0, and the whites on 255, blacks on 0, and then make sure you include this whole graph here. So that's retaining all the information in the highlights and the shadows. And then what I always do is just bring this down a bit to make the scan really flat. And then I'll open it back up in Lightroom. So when you're happy with that, just click scan. So once you've opened up Lightroom and imported the image, the first thing I would do is correct the white balance. You're going to want to pick a neutral spot. If you check the preview up here, it will sort of give you a an insight into what it's going to look like so something like that and then I'll use the temperature tools here and the tint tools to find the perfect balance and once you've found the most accurate white balance you're going to want to crop it to your desired new frame and then using the histogram at the top right we're going to want to bring out the highlights and the shadows because we flattened the image completely in Epson scan so we're gonna to want to bring that back out and then if you press the J button on your keyboard whilst using the blacks tool as soon as the blacks turn blue that means all the information is lost and you're gonna to want to bring that up just before it starts to turn blue so somewhere around there and then for the whites still with the J pressed down 
you're going to want to bring them up until you start to see red. The red is where the clipping occurs, where the loss of information starts. So you're going to want to bring that up just to the point before the red is seen. Don't bother with presence. Saturation I'll bring up sort of about generally about that much, depending on the shot. Don't bother with split toning, don't bother with any of this stuff, um, that's just sort of how I do it. And as you can see here, we found a little piece of thread, some dust spots here, another piece of thread. So to get rid of these, you use the spot removal tool by pressing Q on your keyboard and then just dragging over the area you want to get rid of and then it completely vanishes and it removes the spot. Just gonna go over these spots of dust. There's another thread up here. There's another bit there. I can see another one. This is why I said to make sure all the dust is removed before because I don't have to spend too much time on this scan now. There's not too much dust. It's worth doing that before. Saves you a lot of time. And so, yeah, I think I'm happy with this final image. I don't do too much in Lightroom other than the white balance and removing all the dust and sort of bringing the histogram back out, giving the image some depth and some contrast. Sometimes Epson scan gets it completely wrong and then you'll have to spend way longer in Lightroom correcting the colors and the exposure and stuff. But sometimes just on the preview bit in Epson scan, just it's just sort of trial and error. If you keep doing it, sometimes it gives you a good inversion, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you might have a bit of the border edge included which messes up the white balance and the colors and stuff. So just keep doing it over and over again until you get a nice one and then edit it in Lightroom. So yeah, I'll put a before and after up. Hope this has helped some people. Um, this is my sort of technique. This is my workflow in Epson Scan and Lightroom. Yeah, thanks for watching. Give the video a like, um, subscribe if you want to, and I'll catch you in the next one.